Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about cheap USB hard drives. What you may notice immediately here is these are not USB hard drives. Uh, what you're looking at there are six 8 terabyte Seagate Fire Cuda 7200 RPM drives. And this guy right here is a hard drive dock. So the premise here is very, very simple. The drives just plug in and unplug, just like uh, kind of old school game console cartridges if you're used to that. And you may be wondering why a system like that is any better than something like that, which is just a you know, pre-encapsulated full-size external USB drive. And the short answer is cost, particularly when you're buying more than one drive. As you can see, I bought six drives here. I have six of these that are full and I need to replace them. Over the last several years, the hard drive market's been kind of weird. These I bought... I think four or five years ago for the, the newest ones. And these were $125 a piece. These are also eight terabyte drives. And at the time, it was actually cheaper to buy drives of this size in an enclosure like this. And in fact, it was such a good deal that people were shucking these, which is kind of what it sounds like. Like if you had an ear of corn, you would shuck the drives out of the case so you could then put the raw drives in your own NAS or your computer or whatever. That's how good of a deal these used to be. And it's been my experience, you know, since I started computery things some 30 years ago, that just about every time I would need a new hard drive, meaning larger, basically the sizes would double and the prizes would have. That has not happened since like 2018, 2019. That's not when what's going on. Depending on where you shop, an eight tier terabyte external drive like this is like 150 bucks on up. And I just so happened to luck into a deal on these guys for $109.99 each. And then the dock itself is like $30. So extrapolating some math on out, I saved a couple hundred bucks doing it this way. And you can as well, which is the point of the video. And when you buy these, you never know what's going to be inside them. At the time I bought these, there's allegedly a pretty high quality hard drive in here but it is i think still a pretty slow drive it's an archive drive these drives since i was able to buy them myself and spec them all out they're all 7200 rpm drive which which means for hard drives they're pretty quick and most importantly they all have a five-year warranty and my past experience above anything else when it comes to what quality of hard drive you're going to buy uh, doesn't really matter what manufacturer or anything else it's always always get the one with the five-year warranty so if you're a Western Digital fan, buy a Western Digital with a five-year warranty. Another quick note on durability. A couple weeks ago, I had this guy plugged into my laptop. It was late at night, and I'd forgotten that it was plugged in. And I just picked the laptop up and went to take off with it and slung this drive like probably eight or ten feet across the room. And you can actually see there is a dent in it now. So right there, that little guy is not supposed to be in there. And it's moderately more obvious when compared with one of its brethren that isn't destroyed. This guy back here is fine. And then you see, you know, big impact spot right there. This is the USB Express card that was in the laptop when it happened. And you can see it absolutely destroyed the USB port. It ripped it out of there so violently. This drive since then is written and read like, uh, like three or four more terabytes. It's working just fine. Is that a good thing for... The long-term health of the drive, you know, almost certainly not. I will also mention this was not running when this happened. It was sitting there idle. So had it been running, that probably would be a bigger problem. I think Seagate rates these drives for like a 300G shock load. And I don't know how many Gs that impact would have been, but you know, a significant amount. So whether or not I intended to, that has been durability tested. Also a good time to mention, had this been an actual enclosed to drive, it may have broken the enclosure, but the drive itself probably would not have taken this kind of damage. So food for thought in that event too. So yeah, for 110 bucks, I was able to get each one of those uh, fairly quick drives and you know, the, a good warranty period. They're supposed to be good quality drives. As a matter of fact, right now, the regular Seagate Barracuda drives, which are, or maybe even just the compute drives are actually like 10 bucks more than these. Of course, I will link all this stuff in the description. The prices on Amazon of these have been all over the place, and sometimes they're from Amazon themselves, sometimes they're from an aftermarket reseller, and that's not always a good thing. But I have found over the past few weeks that Newegg has been pretty consistent on the price of these. And as I'm recording this right now, like May 2nd, 2023, that price is accurate. But you know, in the future, do your own research and all that good stuff. Oh, in the future is now. This has happened a few times since I ordered my first drives. 
where the price has gone up like dramatically in a very short period of time. And here you can see the price history, you know, back in April, these were 110 bucks. And then like literally a day or for a day or two, it went up again. I was actually trying to buy more right about that time and thought that I'd gotten lucky. And then they went way back up and then way back down and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it looks like this pricing is fairly reliable, at least since March. You know, keep your eye out. Don't rob yourself or anything else or uh, take as gospel what any idiot, especially this idiot on the internet is going to tell you. Also of note, right now Sabrent has two versions of these docks in the market. This one happens to be a USB 3.1 dock. It is USB-C, which some folks like and some folks hate. Personally, I can't wait until everything's USB-C and has no status lights on it whatsoever. So no power lights, no activity lights, nothing. Oops, I told you a lie. This thing does have a power indicator. It's just so much less obnoxious than I'm used to, but I didn't notice it at first. In reality, that is about half as bright as you see it there on camera. As luck would have it, I actually ended up buying the USB 3.0 counterpart of this, which has both of those things and is not USB-C. I don't need the lights, and having the USB-C was a plus to me, so I sent that one back and ended up with this one. They're both the same price. So if you have a preference either way, the market can suit you. These drives will never outrun a USB 3.0 connection anyway. Uh, the best speeds I'm getting out of them are about 250 megs a second, which again, these are hard drives, not SSDs, so it's pretty good. And USB 3.0 is capable of way more than that. So it shouldn't really matter on a speed basis, just your matter of preference for which style of dock you might like. So now the only thing we need to do here is get these drives initialized and go through a couple of other things. These kind of USB drives already come to you that way. So you just plug them in, you're good to go. Regular hard drives, you have to set up just like an internal drive. So if you've never done that before, I'm going to walk you through the process of how to do it. I think we should be able to do that on Windows 10 and 11. We'll give it a shot and see what happens. But the very first thing you should do when you get one of these drives that is not retail boxed, meaning when I got these drives, they basically came to me just like you see them, uh, not off the shelf at like Best Buy or Office Depot or someplace, is you want to check the serial number and enter that into whatever manufacturer's you've chosen's website and make sure your warranty is actually valid. Um, sometimes on Amazon or even places like Newegg, you'll buy a drive and the drives were sold for like enterprise use. Like someone bought a NAS that had 20 of these drives in it and then shucked them out and resold them. Sometimes you'll find those drives only have like 90 day warranties or no warranty. It just depends how they come. And I recommend doing it before you even get them out of the static wrap is check your serial number and make sure your warranty is actually valid. If it isn't, send your drive back immediately and order a different one. Alrighty, so I got my dock all plumbed in. I should have mentioned it does come with a little wall wart, so these are powered and all that. You don't have to worry about that. And take our drive, and these are suitable for these smaller two and a half inch drives too. You know, if I wanted to, I could just drop it in like so. That's what the little trap door in the cover's for. But otherwise, our full size drive is just gonna go in. You wanna be a little careful here. Those connectors aren't made for repeated use. So just keep that in mind too. You don't want to wear out your hard drives, you know, plugging them in and out constantly. Kind of want to be a little thoughtful about what you're doing here. And then this guy just has a little power button in the back. We'll click it and then we'll go over to Windows to get it initialized. So over here in Windows, nothing really happens. If you come in to look at USB devices, you will see the dock itself, but no disk drive. Same thing if you come over here to like a file manager, this PC, Nothing, nothing in here, just the C drive. And just for our first go around, I did that on purpose to make things easier for you. Uh, this machine just has the one drive in it plus the dock right now. So what we're gonna wanna do is come down to the start menu or search box, or you can hit Windows button S. We'll also bring it up. I'm gonna type disk management. And it's gonna immediately come up and tell us, hey, We've detected this other disk in here. What do you want to do with it? GPT is what you want to do with it. And now it's created this unallocated basic disk. So now we want to right click, new simple volume. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. That's the maximum space of the drive. So if you didn't know, there's been a discrepancy between how hard drive manufacturers and OS manufacturers specify hard drive sizes. And this is going back like decades. So your eight terabyte drive is gonna to format to like 7.6, that's normal. Next, sign the drive letter, don't worry about that. 
You can give it a custom volume label if you want. I pretty much never do. NTFS file system I want. Next, finish. So now it's gonna do a quick format. Boom, just like that, it's done. Ready to use. So there's our brand new partition. Go right here to properties. We can see everything we wanna know about it. What's cool is to, um, like hard drive utilities, the uh, dock itself is transparent. I'll show that to you in Windows 11 here in just a second. But anyway, that's all there is to it on Windows 10. The procedure for 11 is very, very similar. In fact, I might even be exactly the same, but we'll do it anyway. Drive is spun up and all that good stuff. We'll see if we can see the dock. We can, same situation as Windows 10. Nothing doing. Same deal, search. And you can, of course, find this other ways. I'm just old and lazy. Same deal. Wants to initialize a disk, say, yep. It has made a basic disk, so that's a right click. New simple volume, yep. Same deal as before. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there it is, online ready to roll. Right there. Ready to accept data or do anything else you might ever want to do with it. And I very nearly forgot what I said I would show you before. Uh, the dock is transparent to stuff like Crystal Disk. So if for some reason you ever want to do a firmware update or you want to check out the condition of your drive or whatever, you can do that. Uh, it's not like it shows up as a weirdo USB dock. So right there is our 8 terabyte drive. You can see it's got zero power on hours because we just initialized it. Uh, been powered up three times, which makes sense as I was looking for the right one to use. Anyway, so yeah, there you go. It's pretty cool that it's all transparent to you and you can get your serial number from it and all that stuff if you want. And then just for fun, let's throw Crystal Disk Mark at it. And this is a, via a USB 3.1 port on a Dell 3880. Some of you may know it's the Dell from hell. Let's see what it does. Okay, so that read is slightly higher than what I'm seeing in reality most of the time. Most of the time it reads like 225 and writes like 250 on huge files. Now it's doing random read rather than sequential. That should be quite a bit slower. And it is. You know, random reads are what hard drives are bad at. And I would probably guess USB drives probably make it worse. All right, so sequential write is about the same as sequential read, at least the first attempt. So that's cool. But those random reads, though, blue. Hmm. Surprising the random write is that much faster. It's still awful. Hmm. Interesting results. Those random seek times are just terrible. But for what I want to do, this is actually going to be the bulk of it. So what I want to do is write, you know, like large video files, like the one you're watching right now, onto the drive and then occasionally seek them back off. Rarely would I ever actually be working off of any of these drives. I, I truly am using them as like USB backup drives. But all the same, this particular one is destined to go inside the Dell from hell. So, since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and do that quick, and we'll run this test again with it on the SATA bus instead of a USB dock. Okay, pretty much the same results. Uh, these are actually all just a little bit worse, I think. But yeah, the dock doesn't take anything away from us. Let's try one more thing just for fun. Here is my Ultra HD 4K copy of Interstellar. And over here is an MKV of it. If you're not really familiar with what that is, that's all right. Uh, we'll actually cover that in a future video. But for right now, what you really need to know is this is a single file that is almost 70 gigs. So what we're gonna try is copying this off of the USB drive and onto the drive that I just installed it. And we'll take a look and see what the speed and such of that looks like. So what you're really gonna probably wanna watch is this right here. And then when it's done writing, it's actually gonna do a verify pass. So then it'll actually be reading it back off the drive too. Uh, this will probably take a little bit, so I will speed it up for your amusement, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, it'll take a while. You can go ahead and watch that and see what kind of real world performance you might expect. And that took however long it says it did right about here, which for me is just fine. That's kind of a set it and forget it thing. Uh, these are, after all, backup drives. They're, they're mostly backup drives for me, or raw storage drives anyway. So there they are, all initialized and ready to roll. The only thing for me to do now is to get them working in their assorted tasks. 
I have needed a whole bunch more backup drives for a long time now. I was holding out expressly because hard drive prices are so bad. So when I saw these kind of come up on kind of a fluke sale, I thought, hey, this is a good time to maybe spread the word that this is something you could also do. And then later on, if you wanted to, you could, of course, put these in a RAID or an UnRAID or an ASBOX or any number of things you can do with a whole bunch of hard drives. Uh, for me, with the number of computers I have and the things I do, just moving that dock around from time to time is really not going to be a big hardship. If this is something you would like to do, I will try and leave links down in the description as much as I can. For the most part, any hard drive of your choice should be about the same thing as what you saw here. If you don't like these, get something else. I do want to tell you I would suggest you stick with the Sabrent products just because I have, I want to say, over a dozen different Sabrent USB converter things, and they are all flawless. All of them. Never had a problem with any of them. So, highly recommend those. So, with that all said, I want to thank you guys for stopping in for this video. We will catch you on the next one.